Salt marshes are often considered alongside sand dunes because both habitats are shaped by the process of deposition. They're also often found close together in the wider coastal landscape. Salt marshes are flat areas of silt deposits where herbaceous and small shrubby vascular plants then grow. They develop in sheltered areas where fine sediment and mud can be deposited, for instance in sheltered river estuaries or behind a spit, and they're usually intersected by a web of creeks or water channels. Pioneer species such as glasswort and annual sea blights colonise the mud and these are then succeeded up the shore by other salt tolerant plants. Gradually the presence of vegetation reduces water movement, increases the stability of the mud and this continues to increase the rate of accretion or the rate at which sediment accumulates. The plant species that live here are incredibly specialised. They have to cope with a range of different variables such as varying salt levels and ever-changing tidal cycles, temperature differences of seawater, and deposition of sediment on the leaf surfaces. Most are halophytes, meaning they can tolerate saline conditions and have adaptations to cope with the lack of fresh water. For instance, their tissues have low osmotic potential, meaning despite environmental conditions they actually lose very little fresh water. Some, such as the colourful sea lavender, have salt glands to secrete excess salt from their tissues while others transport it to leaves, which are then dropped off when salinity levels become too high. The plants may also have more supporting tissue, and this helps them cope with the mechanical effects of the tide, as well as air spaces in their stems to bring oxygen from the leaves to the roots and cope with the very waterlogged soils. Salt marshes are incredibly variable as well. Even within the same ecosystem, areas can vary in terms of their salinity, oxygen content, light, submergence, rainfall and freshwater runoff. And because of this variation, salt marshes support a range of different plant species, attracting large flocks of migrating birds in the winter, as well as their predators, such as sparrowhawks or hen harriers. It's a wonderful spectacle. And though, if you're visiting a salt marsh, please be aware that trampling can compact and damage the habitat. Also, for your own safety, check the local timetable, local tide timetable, <laughs> because salt marshes can be really dangerous. And as riding tides quickly flood to the creeks, and water channels, it's easy to get stuck in the thick and slippy substrate.